remember about Borneo was the tranquilizing dart. And believe me, I didn't see it coming. I was swinging through some jungle vines on my way to this fig tree, and then I was doing the old hand, hand, tail, hand, hand, tail. And then sing, there's a dart in my side. I feel a little woozy, I crash through some branches, land in a net, and went, next thing I know, I wake up here. Central Park Zoo, New York City. <laughs> and I was not happy with the size of the space. I don't care if everybody here lives like this, I think it's terrible. There's barely enough room here for a couple of tree trunks and a, a vine. I, and every time I get a good leap going, I hit my head on the ceiling. You know, I mean, you call this a rainforest? I mean, I've, I've lived in banyan trees that were bigger than this. <laughs> Plus, the first couple of weeks I was here, I was completely overstimulated. I mean, the noise was unbelievable, you know? I, 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 all the car alarms and the sirens and all, and, all the, and all the cabbies gunning their engines. I mean, we're on Fifth Avenue, right on the park. Everybody thinks that's so great. I'm telling you, you want to live on a cross street, okay? My nerves were shot. And, and all the people standing outside the cage. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Animal habitat. And they're all just standing straight up and, and staring directly at me. Do, do you know what that means to a monkey? It's a threat. And, and baring the teeth, another threat. You know how we look at each other in the rainforest? It's kind of like this, okay? You kind of crouch down like this. And then it's a, a very, very subtle over-the-shoulder thing. <laughs> see? You see? <laughs> but could you get a New Yorker to understand that? I don't think so. The whole experience was so stressful, I was getting ulcers. And, and my roommate was not helping matters. Oh. I mean, he wasn't such a bad guy. It's just, you know, we had nothing in common, you know? We tried to exchange stories, you know. I'd tell him about Borneo, and he'd tell me about the Amazon. But you know what? I think he was really making a lot of stuff up. You know? <laughs> Ten foot lily pads, men eating fish. It's like he thought I was some rube from Dubuque, you know? <laughs> and, and at times, all he would do, you know, he'd sit there. And you know what the really disgusting thing about him was? Was his personal habits. Oh, drove me crazy. I mean, he would scatter his he would scatter his nuts all over the cage. He fouled the cage whenever he felt like it. I did all the cleaning up. And sometimes he would just sit there, staring off into space, you know? And he would make this noise, you know, like, day after day after day. I put up with it for as long as I could, but it was driving me nuts. So one day, I just turned to him and I said, hey, hey, do you have to do that? Well, he got, he got all defensive and I got angry. Scene. We started chattering away at each other, and then I, I accidentally pulled some tufts out of his fur out. Next day, he was gone. At first, it was a big relief. You know, I could make noise at night if I wanted to. My banana nut mash was right there in my bowl, right where I left it. <laughs> the only problem was, after a while, I... I didn't feel obliged without my roommate there to pretend like I had a life, you know? <laughs> so, you know, swinging on the vine and doing somersaults and banging my bowl on the floor, you know? That all went by the boards. So, I must have spent, gosh, five, maybe six weeks just, you know, laying draped over a polyurethane tree limb. <laughs> it all kind of hit me at once, you know? But hey, you know, the nice thing was, after a while, people started to notice, and they were concerned. I mean, hey, there was actually an article in the Times about it, huh? huh? 
And I got a referral to a really wonderful, wonderful therapist. Yeah, and he helped me work through some issues I was having. And you know what? It was actually his idea to, uh, to for them to start hiding my food. You know, it, it really, uh, it makes life a little bit more exciting, you know, because every day I, I have to ask myself, what are those bastards up to? <laughs> Where did they put it? Is it in the log? <laughs> Sometimes it's in the log. <laughs> but the, I gotta tell you, the whole experience of needing help and getting help was, was, you know, really opened me up to the ethic of New York. And I think it's a really positive thing because you know, when I was back in the rainforest, if I felt nervous or unhappy, I, I just had to hide it, you know? Or I could climb a tree and start screeching, you know? But here, it's, it's almost like you're rewarded for it. <laughs> Neurosis becomes a, a way of belonging, a way of, a way of asserting your membership in the group. My, uh, my therapist says, adapt or perish. <laughs> he's not a Freudian, he's a, a Darwinian. <laughs> All that aggressive behavior that used to intimidate me before, it, uh, it doesn't really get to me now. You know, like this guy over here, you know, he's been, he's been making direct eye contact with me this whole time. You know, tapping on the glass. I hate that, you know? <laughs> 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 Fuck off, buddy! <laughs> you have to give it right back to him, you know? It's better at it. me like it used to. Oh, no, 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 no. As a matter of fact, you know, because I, I, I woke up one morning and I just, I looked around and, and I really started to study people's faces, you know, and, and their clothes and the way people carry themselves. And, and I really got fascinated with the whole thing. I mean, this city is one of the best cities in the world for people watching. I, I looked out the other day and I saw this family of Orthodox Jews. And uh, the father and the three oldest sons were wearing those, those really cool hats, you know. And right next to them, was this was this Indian lady in a sari with a red dot in the middle of her head. And, and right next to them, right next to her, was this obese, blonde couple wearing sports clothes, obviously out-of-towners, probably mis Midwesterners of Swedish descent, you know? <laughs> they were but in New York, huh? huh? I, the, the size of my cage doesn't even bother me anymore. You know, we got the, the walls are now painted with this great foliage. It kind of gives it a nice Trump Loy effect. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, somebody will come back from the from the Bronx Zoo just raving about the amount of space they have there, saying, you know, you really should look into a transfer. And I tell them, sure, sure, there's more space, but you gotta live in the Bronx. <laughs> location, location, location. You know, it's funny how things change after you've been here a while. The noise, I hardly notice. The, 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 you know, every, the pace, I thrive on it, it completely energizes me. The, the sense of momentum, of constant change, of raw creativity. I, 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 I think it's intoxicating. I, I just, I just woke up one morning and I was in love with this city. The end.